we're still in the 19th century and women didn't have a lot of rights yet. Is there anybody that you can think of that really had an impact? The person that, in my opinion, made the greatest impact in Ohio and across the country is a woman by the name of Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. She was born in 1825 in Baltimore, Maryland. She was a person of color. Her parents are free, so she's born free. Unfortunately, her parents pass away, and so at age three, her uncle, William, and her Aunt Harrietta uh, take her in. He has a school, he's built a school, and he's teaching um, free colored children how to read and write. And so uh, Frances is one of his students. As she gets older, at around age 13, she works in a very well-to-do white family home as a domestic, and they have a huge library. And she is allowed to read just about everything that they have. She loves to write and she has published her first book of poetry by the time she's 20. She comes to Ohio and she's teaching at the Union Seminary and she's teaching sewing and embroidery. She's writing, she's starting to lecture about all sorts of causes, the plight of slaves. Remember slavery's cruel hands, make heathens at your doors. And so she goes on the public circuit. She travels in the South, she travels all through the East Coast, she travels in New England, and then she winds up again in Ohio. In 1858, she is speaking to the Colored Men's Association. I think this is where she finally meets her husband-to-be. His name was Fenton Harper. He's a widower and he has three children. And so for her to leave her speaking engagements and her writing, she's publishing books, she turns a lot of money over to all of these benevolent causes, but she gets married and she uh, helps her husband buy a farm outside of Columbus near Grove City. She's taking care of his three children and they have a child of their own, Mary. But uh, she's not married long because four years later he passes away. Shortly afterwards, five months later or so, she's back on the speaking circuit again, still giving money to the anti-slavery societies. She is campaigning about temperance. She's speaking now at conventions about education. You know, the war's over. They're even traveling back to the South talking to slaves that have now gotten their freedom, but still are living there in shacks. And she really talks to the women, and she has private meetings with these women on how to elevate themselves. I find it extraordinary in 1871 that she's going to the South, you know, when we know that the Klan has started to rise, yeah. you know, and no one ever bothers her. She sounds fearless. She is she fearless. She probably projected that. She died on February the 20th, 1911. Oh, she lived a long time. She lived a long time. She lived to be 85 years old. Crime has no sex, and yet today, I wear the brand of shame. I think she still has a profound impact, although her name may not be as much a household word, because I think what always impressed me about her was that uh, she really could call it out about men. She wrote a poem about the double standard, and the double standard has to be the most eye-opening poem you've ever read. How men had defined the sphere for women and that what was the difference between a woman who had fallen and a young man who had caused the fall. Women not being raised and elevated to the level of men, that would trouble her. And, and she was just so adamant about trying to make a difference in all these lives.